Morning Majority on 630. WMAL. 607 on the Morning Majority. Thursday morning in Washington. Brian Neiman, Mary Catherine Hamm from the Daily Caller in this morning. Coming up one hour from now, Congressman Thad McCotter will join us. Lanny Davis, former Clinton White House counsel, in about a half hour from now, 636. We'll get into the budget battle, possibly a government shutdown tomorrow night. Although they were working through the night to come up with a deal. So we'll talk to those guys about that big issue for sure coming up. Right now, though, um, well, I'm sure Glenn Beck will have plenty to say about the government shutdown later today on this Fox show at 5 o'clock. Um, but that show will come to an end soon. To our parting ways, they uh, still on plan on having a relationship. Brian Stelter, media reporter for the New York Times, has been writing about this story for quite some time and joins us now. Good morning, Brian. Good to talk to you again. Good morning. You too. Well, you tell us why. Why did this happen and, and why yesterday? <laughs> You know, Glenn Beck is a unique character. He always has been. He always will be. And I don't think he really fit in at Fox News. Unlike everybody else at Fox, you know, he came in and he was already a star. He already had a radio show and, a, and books and a whole company. And I think uh, you know the two did not really uh, fit in together. They they didn't even from the beginning. And I think the relationship got worse and worse over the last two years. Uh, it's really hard to assign blame. It's just a matter of two very different types of companies. And so it seemed a little bit inevitable when they decided yesterday to split up. Did they have creative differences, or was it all about just well, the I bottom think there line? Was some, I think there was some, some uncomfortable, there were some uncomfortable days when Glenn Beck would say things that, that might be perceived as going too far for Fox News. Uh, you know, there were some days where Fox had to encourage him to apologize or or correct himself or, you know, clarify his comments. It didn't happen too often, but, right. it, but it came up once in a while. I think more fundamentally, you know, there was a sense that um, Glenn Beck didn't need Fox News. He didn't rely on Fox News the way that everybody else there has. And that might not have been a very comfortable thing for Fox. Well, it's interesting that you note know the tension apparently did exist from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, because there's there's a tendency for folks who boycott it and, and uh, Color of Change was the group that right, had right. advertised with, to sort of like declare victory and maybe for That's conservatives right. to take up similar actions in the future against people they don't like on the TV. But uh, it's interesting that that may, may have not been the, the, the cause there. You know, we didn't take, uh, you know, in, in our story this morning, we didn't take the, uh, the declarations of victory very seriously because it, it didn't seem to me that the advertiser boycott was the final reason why uh, Glenn Beck was wrapping up his time at Fox. Certainly it doesn't help when advertisers are shunning your show. But, you know, Glenn Beck's always had advertisers on his radio show. He's never had uh, a bigger problem when it comes to uh, companies unwilling to sponsor him. So, uh, although I do think uh, even in their final meetings, I have a feeling that Glenn Beck and Roger Ailes knew the liberal uh, groups would try to call this a win. And I think the reality is more complicated than that. I think Beck's kind of being unfairly treated in that the people are, are pointing out that the ratings have just fallen off a cliff. I mean, is that true? Because, I mean, what I've seen, he's still doing very well, especially he's for 5 o'clock. Well, that's right. Roger Ailes told the Associated Press yesterday, look at CNN, go over to MSNBC, ask them if they want Glenn Beck's ratings right now. And they'd take him in a heartbeat, uh, based on those ratings at least. Uh, you know, he has fallen off, but cable news ebbs and flows. You're right. Uh, when, when <laughs> think about Gunbeck's timing. He came on the air one day before Barack Obama was inaugurated. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that, his timing was impeccable. For a while there, he had three million viewers in the depths of the recession when people were just beginning to see what President Obama was going to be doing in his first year in office. I think it's un understandable that his numbers have fallen off somewhat since then. He still has about two million viewers a day, and, and that's in the middle of the day, five o'clock, which right. is tremendous for any any cable news guy. So you know, there's been some fall off, but I, I don't, you know, I, gosh, if I were getting two million viewers a day at five o'clock, I, I would be thrilled. Yeah, yeah it's huge. Um, well, Keith Olbermann's post MSNBC career has been somewhat less than a splash. Uh, what do we see moving forward for Glenn Beck? What intelligence do you have on that? I think, I think even, even you know, a year and a half ago, Glenn Beck was already thinking about whether he could start his own cable channel or whether he could take over part of a cable channel. You know, Keith Olbermann is going and creating one hour on this channel no one's heard of, current TV, and then maybe he'll start to create other programming. Glenn Beck's coming from a stronger position because he's already creating shows. 
he already has subscribers to his website mm-hmm. signing up for daily shows. So he could go and take over part of a cable channel, or he could expand his website, you know, and make that into something more like Howard Stern, where he's encouraging people to come to him uh, every day at the same place and pay for it. Uh, yeah, but I don't think they know yet. I think now that they've made this decision with Fox, figured out their future with Fox, now they can figure out where else to go. They, they say that they're going to work together with uh, joint projects uh, down the road. Do you see that yeah. Do you see that relationship lasting, or is this just kind of uh, a <laughs> play-out-the-contract kind of thing? I, I think we'll see Glenn or, or his company a bit on Fox from time to time, but uh, our impression uh, is that this is, is more of a face-saving move than anything else, mm-hmm. this is a deal for new content. Uh, the agreement uh, at Fox between Beck and Ailes essentially boiled down to this. They said, look, let's leave as friends. Mm-hmm. And I've got to give them credit for that because right. we see a lot of breakups oh, in TV. Sure. Think about Conan O'Brien and NBC a while back. It doesn't always have to be as comfortable as it was for these two guys. Right, and it's very high stakes, uh, so it's impressive to see. Do we have any idea what Fox may do in in place of Glenn Beck at 5 o'clock, and when will his last show be? That's that's what we're starting to figure out now. Uh, They haven't said when his last show will be. His contract doesn't run out to the winter, but if I was a betting man, I would put money on sometime in the next three or four months. I don't think he'll be here by the end of the summer. And I think one of the reasons they don't want to tell us the date is because I think we'll read a lot into it. We'll also start to ask who's going to replace him. You know, last night on Fox, he said he likes Andrew Napolitano. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's the guy that subs for him sometimes. Well, I think it's fascinating about that. Andrew Napolitano hosts the only openly libertarian television show in the country. He's on Fox Business, has a show called Freedom Watch. Right. Even more than Glenn, he's an out- outward libertarian. I think it'd be great to have that kind of diversity of, of, of views on TV. So it's possible we'll see him come over. We, we could have a news show, though, fill that time slot for the time being, because uh, we have an election coming up, and there's going to be a lot of news. Right, and I believe during the last election they had a election watch show was at five o'clock yes, exactly PM. exactly so I, i'm wondering if they'll do something like that again uh but uh i have a feeling they probably already have a favorite person maybe making kelly yeah. on the news mm-hmm. side who her star seems to be rising i wanted to ask you a little bit about uh we have reports that meredith vieira will leave the today show maybe matt lauer and katie couric possibly leaving uh her yeah. position at cbs and i i'm, I'm just wondering if we're just going to have this incredible glut of unemployed morning show people <laughs> <laughs> what will the economy do? It is a strange coincidence uh, right now. All these, all these anchors moving around. Katie Couric, pretty, pretty. We're pretty sure she's leaving CBS Evening News. Meredith Vieira, I, I'm also pretty sure she's leaving the Today Show in a few months. I'm not so sure about Matt Lauer. You know, Matt's got another year and a half to go on his contract, and he really is the heart of the Today Show now. So I, I think NBC would move heaven and earth to uh, to convince him to stay. But I think what we're seeing is. How, how tumultuous a time it is in TV. You know, think about how the Internet's disrupting the TV business model. Yep. It's no wonder people like Katie Couric uh, are looking around and wondering if they can do better elsewhere and, and wondering if it's just time to get out. I think it's just the fruition of George Stephanopoulos' master plan <laughs> <laughs> to take over all of TV. George Stephanopoulos on every single network. Oh. <laughs> Spare me. All right, Brian, good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate the insights. <laughs> it was good stuff. Brian Stelter, New York Times media reporter, here on The Morning. 